All right. Uh, my name is Arvid, uh, and I work at a hedge fund in New York called Two Sigma. Two Sigma. On my spare time, I maintain a library. Uh, specifically a compiled library, not one of these fancy headers only libraries. So, uh, for instance, my library has build configurations. You can build a debug version and a release version of it. You can build with deprecated functions enabled, or you can build with them disabled, and a few other configurations along these lines. Uh, so, imagine that you have a header for your library that looks something like this. You have a struct, and one of these members was really a mistake to add, so you want to get rid of it. So you if def it under this build configuration option. And then you have a function that returns this. Uh, you have a client that includes your header file, calls this function. Now, it's, it's very important that both the client and your library is built with the same build configuration. Otherwise, this define will be different. They will have different uh, understandings of uh, the layout of this struct. Uh, this is basically the same problem of linking against the wrong version of MSVC uh, CRT or uh, having incompatible settings for GLBCXX debug, uh, if you're familiar with that. Uh, so, how do you force uh, the client to have the same configuration as, as the library? There are a few solutions. Uh, there's PKG config, boost build, surprisingly, has very good support for propagating. Uh, uh, requirements up the, the dependency graph. Uh, Conan, uh, I learned this week, uh, also has ability to export sort of uh, <coughs> requirements. Turns out uh, not a lot of people use boost build. Uh, and my, my ex experience is that people only use PKG config after they've been bitten by this, uh, this problem. And uh, the symptom is memory corruption. And I get vague bug reports. I figure it out, tell them, and then they use PKG config. So I want to remove myself from this sort of uh, cycle. So what, what do you do? You can turn it into a link time error. So basically, uh, what I ended up doing is something like this. You have, uh, as part of your library, you have one header that's the build config header. So let's see what's, what's going on here. So uh, this looks at the current build configuration, and it creates defines uh, that with you know names, uh, either no deprecate or deprecated uh, asserts or no asserts. Uh, you, know, you can imagine that you have more of these uh, build configurations. Uh, you concatenate these names uh, using boost preprocessor, obviously. Uh, then you declare a function with this name. Uh, in your library, you define an empty function with this name. And then somehow you force your clients to uh, attempt to make a call to this function. Uh, you can do this through different ways. Uh, for instance, if you have a main class uh, that basically you have to instantiate to use your library, you can have its constructor be inlined, make a call to this, uh, and then you know, forward that call to the actual constructor. Uh, and then you get this instead. Uh, and and, and a, a bug report with this pasted in it is much more pleasant to, uh, to handle. However, though, uh, if you can, I would really recommend doing this. This is what I've started doing, uh, where basically you, you make sure that the, the binary layout of your structs are the same. And then when you actually delete this, uh, this uh, member, you can delete them both at the same time. And you never sort of really run into uh, the compatibility issue. Uh, obviously, you have to bump your SO version. This is sort of inter-SO version. Um, also want to mention, if you are looking for long-term ABAC compatibility and backwards compatibility specifically, you should probably look at inline namespaces instead. Thank you. That's it.